Hello, my name is Igor, and uh, you are watching my tech farm. And welcome to my big uh, film and dry comparison video. What I have here are six film and drives, which covers um, maybe 90% currently on the market of the dedicated film and dryers. And I have a separate review videos for each one. But in this video, I want to answer only one question, and that is which one dries better. And for this I prepared an experiment which will be repeatable, so in the future videos, if I will have a filament dryer, uh, I want those results to be comparable with these ones. What is this experiment? Well, I have here these uh, sponges for cleaning the, of the soldering tip, and I selected here uh, six which are with a similar weight, and I will add exactly two milliliters of water to each, of course, I will measure the weight because the measuring the weight is much more accurate than the measuring the volume. And then I will place it uh, inside these filament dryers, approximately to the same position. And uh, then I will start drying. And I will measure the weight after 30 minutes and also after 60 minutes. And of course, I want to calculate at the end the, how much water evaporates because uh, maybe there will be some variation at the beginning on the weights but uh, a final score will be actually the weight, the mass of the water which evaporates. And uh, I will measure everything with these new sensors. Uh, earlier I usually used the HDC 1080 sensor, but only I have two of those and they communicate over I2C uh, communication. And it's a little bit complicated to attach six of them uh, to one Arduino. Uh, but now I have this uh, DHT22 sensors, which are quite accurate and um, it's very easy to uh, attach to the Arduino, only you have to connect, give it the power and connect to the analog pins. And uh, since I have here these wires, which are well, almost one meter long, uh, I have here the 10K pull-up resistor. And I have the readings on the, uh, my screen, which I will process of course later in the Excel. And I can see from these readings that it is quite accurate. Currently in this room is approximately 22 degrees Celsius and approximately 50% is the relative humidity. Let's take a closer look of the setup. Actually, first I want to introduce the competitors. Uh, the first box is the eSun eBox filament dryer. And this is the newer version, uh, eBox Lite. But uh, this one is improved. Uh, this one works on 36 watt power and this one on 48 watts power. Uh, only one thing I, we don't have here is the scale which is here included. Then the third one is the Sunlu filament dryer. And also works on 48 watts power and it doesn't have the fan. I think this is the only one which doesn't have the fan and don't have the dedicated space for the silica gel. The next one is the solar filament dryer, which also works on 48 watts power and also have the fan and two spools can fit inside. The fifth is the creative filament dryer. It uses the AC power, works on uh, 120 watts uh, power and uh, the temperature is not adjustable and it has also the fan. And the last one in this row is the iBoss filament dryer and uh, it was on AC power, uh, I think in the, on 100 watts and as you can see it's quite big, two spools can fit inside uh, at the same time. And now about the setup. What I have here is the Arduino Uno which is con connected to my laptop. I try to uh, place the sensor approximately in the middle of the filament dryer and just in case I use some tape to, to uh, stay in, in the place and uh, the sponge will be placed on that uh, distancer. I just print that from the ABS so it will survive. It's good for up to 95 degrees Celsius. Uh, so it's approximately 50 millimeters above this plate which are placed on the rollers. I will measure the weight on this uh, jewelry scale. And everything will be written here. So I will write first the weight of the empty sponge, dry sponge, and then I will add two milliliters of water and measure that weight. And then I will measure the weight after 30 minutes and after 60 minutes. 
the Arduino is collecting the data every five seconds uh, from each. So actually, every half minutes, I get a new, completely new line, and uh, I will process everything later in the Excel. Point six nine two. So they are set to maximum now and I will wait 30 minutes and then I will measure the sponges and then place the back and uh, another 30 minutes and we will see the result. And almost it will be 30 minutes then I will measure the sponges one by one and quickly place it back. Of course the temperature dilatation will be visible. And I want to show you one thing, the humidity on these two filament dryers. <laughs> this one almost looked completely dry. Soon uh, one hour will pass, so I have to prepare for the measuring. And I can see a extremely lot of moisture here and uh, some moisture here on the sun loop. <laughs> the easiest way to switch them down in the same time is to cut the power down in the switch. Oh, it's quiet now finally. Okay, let's quickly measure the weights. Oh, I have to start the time lapse. I will have the sensor collecting the data a little bit more so uh, I can see maybe the cooling process, how fast or how good is the thermal insulation, for example. And uh, I measure now, and this is the data. And uh, of course, I will show you soon the results in the graph. Let's talk about them a little bit more. Uh, so these are two uh, e-box uh, filament dryers, uh, this is the light version and it has bigger, uh, bigger power and uh, I can see that the desiccant works quite good because I couldn't see any moisture on the walls. On Sanlu here we don't have a fan and we don't have a, a desiccant inside and uh, here I follow the temperature a little bit uh, and I saw uh, moisture, even now it can be visible. So definitely uh, adding a desiccant, for example, in the middle of the spool will be very useful here. So I uh, also follow the temperature. Uh, I can see moisture here, so it, it has good temperature. But at the beginning it was a little bit hard start because it has to heat up bigger volume. But later it reached those temperature as you can see it pressed the moisture out of it. And maybe you can see there is the line, so because there is the hole. So from this part the moisture goes out. Uh, here it's stuck inside, so definitely uh, here creating a, another hole would be very useful. Of course, with the filaments you don't have this big amount of the moisture. Uh, in theory, yes, uh, another hole would be helpful here. <laughs> Creality. 
dryer. Very interesting. I follow the temperatures and uh, I remember from the review that uh, it has the most powerful heater and it is very visible on, on the screen too. Uh, but it turns on off that with the relay that heater every maybe see four or five minutes and I can see the temperature goes up and then follows maybe five six degrees Celsius you will see soon in the graph and uh, the eye was uh, most constant uh, temperature and uh, I can see the temperature is a little bit lower than in my review but now in uh, temperature in this room is 22 degrees Celsius uh, I think it is 5 degrees Celsius colder than when I did this review here. And uh, <laughs> this is completely dry uh, compared to the others, which I can feel that it is wet. I was waiting approximately 15 minutes more to record some cooling data. And now I will copy and I'll save these numbers and process them in Excel and to see which dryer is the best. This was quite big work and I believe this topic is very useful and I hope you will help me by sharing this video because it will be very disappointing if this video will also stuck in YouTube recommendations like most of my videos. Let's start with analyzing the temperatures. On horizontal axis you can see the minutes and here uh, the Celsius degrees. And I started recording after approximately one minute. And uh, after 30 minutes you can see maybe a little variation because here I opened for the measuring after 30 minutes and here I stopped the drying so uh, this is actually the cooling time. And uh, from this graph you can see that uh, Creality has the strongest heater but it turns on and off every maybe I don't know four or five minutes and the temperature variates quite a lot. The second strongest heater is the IBOS, but it's more accurate and constant temperature. So you can see uh, it was set to 70 degrees Celsius. It couldn't reach this uh, temperature, but outside it was only 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, maybe I will mention the Sovol, uh, which is the biggest printer, only 48 watts power. So it starts with the heating uh, a little bit later. And uh, actually, if you can see here, after one hour, uh, it was the second uh, warmer uh, filament dryer in this um, test. But it needs more time for heating up. And the others are quite similar. Now let's see the humidity changing. Very interesting. Only the iBox acts are like a real dryer because on the top of the box, the air constantly goes out. And uh, with this, the humidity too. Uh, with uh, other filament dryers, the humidity stacks inside. And you can see here it was opened uh, for the 30 minutes measuring. And in each case, uh, the humidity dropped down significantly because uh, I let out with this that humidity. And the most important, uh, the measuring the sponges. Uh, this is the table and uh, I was thinking uh, which graph to show you because this is uh, in grams and this is in percentage but I try to be accurate as much as possible and uh, so I decided to show you this one in percentage. Actually they are quite similar. Uh, so we can see that ebox, uh, even ebox slide perform quite good, but these are only uh, filament dryers which has the silica gel inside because they have the dedicated space for this. The Sanlu it doesn't have a fan and doesn't have a silica gel inside, and uh, you saw in a few minutes ago that the moisture stuck on the uh, inside; uh, it was visible on the walls. Uh, similar was with the Sovol. Uh, this was much bigger printer, so it starts uh, drying a little bit uh, later with some delay. And it has a fan, but it doesn't have the silica gel. And uh, also here we can could saw that uh, moisture on the walls. <laughs> the Creality here, it has very big potential, uh, but the temperature varies a lot. And that really turns uh, clicks on and off every maybe five minutes. So with better electronic, uh, this could be a very good uh, filament dryer. But of course, the humidity also stuck inside. So maybe it would be better to have some holes on the top. And the iBox, uh, <laughs> 
even on a 30 minutes measuring I feel that that uh, sponge is uh, almost completely dry and visually at least uh, it was uh, close to the 100% uh, after 40 minutes and of course this is the maximum so it can go uh, higher than 100% and the results I will upload on mytechfun.com website too. And in this table I will add always new lines when I will get some new filament drive for the review. So it will be comparable with these results because I will repeat the same test uh, with each new product. And now the conclusions. But this is what I like with this kind of experiments that I don't have to tell you my opinion, just provide you my results. Uh, I didn't mention two things, very important, uh, and that's the price and the noise. The price varies, uh, but I got this uh, filament rice from different uh, manufacturers uh, and the price may vary it depends on your location. Now in Europe we have some additional VAT and tax and um, I will place uh, a link in the description so you can check the price yourself and maybe if you select your location you will get the correct price. About the noise, it also varies a lot uh, because some uh, fans are loud, some have some click noise of the relay uh, but uh, probably I'll do some kind of follow-up video and uh, I can test now this sound level meter which I got from the Banggood so uh, I will have that information too and uh, in the future now uh, I have now this experiment with the sponge and also I will have the noise uh, to compare the future film head dryers with these ones because actually two companies already contacted me that uh, they will have a new type of the film head dryer but I cannot tell which uh, companies, um, but I will be one of the first who will uh, get them to uh, do the review. And uh, finally, I could test this DHT22 sensor. This is the first time I used this sensor, and it was very pleasant surprise. It is not that accurate like HDC1080 uh, sensor, which I used earlier, uh, but this one is much easier for the using and to connect with the Arduino. I will place the affiliate link down in the description to the Banggood if you decide to buy this one because uh, this is uh, more accurate than its little brother DHT11 which uh, is less accurate and the uh, measuring temperature range is also smaller. Uh, that would be it in this video. Thank you for watching and happy drying!